Alrighty. Welcome, welcome to my Thanks. show. How you doing? What are you naming it? Uh, I, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll okay. figure that out later. It's just a show. So. I yeah. vote Rick and Morty. That's a good name. Alright, you're gonna start. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we have uh, Spades or Thales or Connor. One of the few names he goes by. Um, he's a high level Rocket League player and we're gonna pick his brain on a few Rocket League things. So, how long have you been playing Rocket League? Uh, since about one week after release. Okay, that's a long time. So, what 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 was your main reason for wanting to play Rocket League? Uh, at first it was mostly just a game that me and my friend Justin didn't get bored while playing. Okay, can understand that. So, how long did it take you to get from when you started to where you are now? Uh, other than exactly how long it's been since then? Yeah, like, what do you mean? Like, um, the, the like, like percentage-wise, I guess, um, season one already, I was, I was relatively high up there. In season one, there was bronze one, two, three, silver one, two, three, gold one, two, three, and then platinum was for top 100, and that was it. And so in season one, I had already started off at gold three, which was the highest you could be without being literally pro at the game. Okay. So from the start, you're pretty much already good. <laughs> yeah, I had a pretty good leg up on most people because I started really early in the season and I played a lot with my friend. Yeah, I see that typically with most early players is that they're relatively better than everyone else as all the alpha people pretty much are really good at the game anyways that's uh that but what, what would you say makes someone good at rocket league what does it take for someone to become like your skill level um I'd say there's a base level of mechanics needed. Like, you have to be able to power clear, you have to be able to do basic dribbles, aerials, all that. But I think I think what's most important is having really good game sense, knowing when to go for the ball, how to rotate, exactly what kind of shot you should go for. Uh, if you can find weak spots in, like, a dribble or, a, like, an entire team's defense, then you have a pretty big leg up there. And just mental versatility, I guess I would call it, hmm. is it makes it, it makes it a lot easier to progress through the ranks. All right. So it's basically the difference between someone who's in a lower rank, such as myself, and somebody that's in your rank. Yeah, I'd say I'd say a lot of it comes down to just experience and knowledge of the game. Right. Like, there's lots of people who are really high ranking, but have really no mechanical ability. And I'm sure everyone can really think of a couple of people like that. Right. Well, that brings me to the next thing. Um, as being a high level Rocket League player, what goes through your mind when you're in a 1v1? situation like if you're just playing against someone random like like in an actual 1v1 or just in like a team game where it's just me and another person in a, in an actual 1v1 in an actual 1v1 it's it's mostly trying to see how they play at first like how aggressive they're trying to be uh what shots they like to go for and things like that right how about when you're in a team match, so say 3v3s, what do you mainly do as your playstyle goes? I'm I'm a really aggressive player, and I've been striker for most like teams, quote unquote, that I've been in. Typically, either setting up for myself or setting up for others is what I do. 
Okay. Yeah, I see that a lot when we play. <laughs> uh, what do you think separates you from a pro player, say, Squishy? Um, I mean, it helps that Squishy has a lot more experience with the game. But Squishy, for example, is incredibly mechanically skilled and has been like a pioneer in some of the mechanical meta, I guess I would call it. He's he's really paved the way for a lot of people for specific shots. Like he was he was very adamant on getting the ceiling shot into the meta. He he would regularly pull it off and it became part of high level Rocket League. And being on the forefront of that really like allows him to keep improving at a steady rate with Rocket League. But I haven't been as dedicated to the game, so I've I've lagged behind at times. Like I took a two month long break at the beginning of the game because uh, I just didn't feel like playing that much before I got really into it. And so this, this set me back a good bit. And so pretty much since then, it's just kind of been catch up for me. So I, I have to learn all these new mechanics after the highest levels have already learned them if I want to ever have a chance of keeping up right. at where I'm at. Okay. Well. So... What do you think uh, about um, people like, say, Tony or Monte, how they've, like, come from just starting the game maybe last year or this year, a couple months back? How long do you think it would take them to get from there to your level, say, because they're already plat? I think, I think as you go up in rank, it gets... It's like compared to previous ranks it gets exponentially harder like you could go from bronze one to bronze two in like a matter of a day but like going from diamond one to diamond two would take a good while and so for how long it would take i'm not really sure how long i'd put it certainly wouldn't be any time within the like next two months i'd say okay I mean, I obviously don't play the game as much as I probably should. <laughs> Hence why I just am not good. But we don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, give me a little bit about your, like, history with Rocket League. So, like, I heard you once told me that you were a coach for a college team. I was, I was the captain of a college team before... Hespa got involved and started creating this huge org. I, I went to uh, RIT where I, I was there for a while before I, I pretty promptly dropped out. But during my inactive status, I still got to play for the team. And while I was at RIT, uh, I, I remember my roommate first telling me that like the Rocket League team was going to be a thing. And uh, that that pretty much like set me on the path for it immediately because I really wanted to join it because I thought it sounded like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was talking with the guy in charge for like a really long time to try and get this like all sorted out. I really wanted this to be a thing. I was I was really excited to meet all the new people because college there was. I didn't enjoy the academics of it very much, but the people there were really cool. And I made I made a lot of friends from there that I really enjoyed like spending time with. I still I still talk to them every now and then. And when that finally became a thing, we we had this really poorly run uh twos tourney. Uh, everyone got random partner from those who signed up and I made it to second place in the tournament because uh, me and the this other guy Bosco we were the only two who were champ in the in the tourney so we had a pretty clear advantage there 
and then uh, he got paired with at the time I think he was an all star because this was like season three ish somewhere around there and I got paired with a rising star which was two ranks below and so uh, we were able to keep the series incredibly close we had like a like a two and a half minute long overtime for the final game we we went so far as to have a bracket reset in grand finals too because it was double elim and so from there uh the the manager pretty much put me as captain of the team and i pretty much just tried to make sure that everyone in my division of which we had two was regularly practicing and was playing with their teammates so we'd regularly just hop into threes whoever was online and we'd practice patience passes etc and uh eventually uh i i had to leave because i was no longer technically affiliated with the college and uh shortly after tespa created their entire org which uh was kind of a bummer because i wanted to do the org too and fun You just lost it because you weren't at the college anymore. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can technically participate because it was a college activity. Right. Okay. Do you ever still play with your old teammates? Um, from time to time, I'll, I'll message some of them, like uh, teammate Monaco and a teammate named White Bark, who's uh, champ three right now. I actually think he was grand champ for a period of time and got his GC rewards. And so he was he was a pretty good player. And so I, I like to message him every now and then and we will play a game or two. All right. Well, that's uh, it's nice. Do you still play with your old teammates? Um, would you say the main thing for somebody that wants to start playing? should do and practice if they are going to start playing rocket league oh um i mean from what i've seen from tony and monte alone like they've they've done a lot of 1v1s with me which has been incredibly one-sided but they've picked up a lot of things off of it like like i'll, I'll say something like hey you need to power clear more your dribble is weak here sometimes obviously i'm just gonna like not really care too much if we 1v1 and just kind of like relax and hang out with a friend but other times i genuinely try to help them improve like uh tony for the longest time was 1v1ing me to uh try and improve and i think he really did over time he learned a lot of things and I i'd say that one of the most important things is having someone who can teach you like there are tons of places to find people like that sometimes even in unranked you'll find someone like that you don't even really have to search for it too hard but I think having that experience playing someone better than you and knowing exactly what you can do to improve certain aspects of your game helps. And if you're not going to do that, then I'd say that one of the most helpful things for me was free play. Pretty much everyone says it because it's true. Free play just lets you do so many things and it gives you semi-realistic situations to games. So you don't even really feel like... Uh, other than the lack of a goalie, I guess, uh, you don't really feel like you're too out of a normal game's element. You can transfer it a bit easier than, uh, say, custom training, which kind of just puts the ball uh, in sometimes unrealistic positions. Like, sometimes the ball is just still in the air. All right. Well, I think... One of the big questions that some people have that don't play the game, and I know, is whether you should use a keyboard or a controller. <laughs> if I could go back in time, I would use a controller, but I've spent too long on keyboard, and thus I'm stuck in my ways. Because <laughs> I know majority, definitely majority of the game uses a controller. There's very few high level players that use keyboard and obviously they're very good because they've been using it for a while such as yourself yeah, um, it, 
it takes a lot i'd say i'd say on average mechanics take a little bit longer to learn how to do because we have less ease of motion right whereas uh controllers i believe they have 16 different angles they can move in on the left joystick we have eight different angles which is forward sides back and then the diagonals in between and then controllers have the diagonals in between those two it makes yeah. movement a lot more fluid plus they have like dead zones which provides them even more precise movement and mm. so if you're going to be a keyboard player your movements will be really fast which is an advantage but at the same time it's harder to angle shots because you you have to properly do it in a much smaller amount of time All right all right i think that's about all i really wanted to cover is there anything you'd like to add to this whole conversation um i say that pretty much just if you want to get good at the game you have to be able to dedicate a lot of time to it and so some people by default won't be able to do that and as unfortunate as that is it's just kind of the reality of the situation and if you don't dedicate a lot of time to it i.e you then you're not going to improve as fast as other people <laughs> Like, you and Monte started playing at the same time, but you've played, like, a lot of different games, and even I've done the same, so I haven't improved as much, but Monte is, like, what, plat three or something plat around something. there? something. He's just plat. He's something. Who knows? But, uh, <laughs> you're, you're still in gold for now, because that's, you just haven't played that much. And right. so that's kind of set you back, and so... I don't think most people are really ready for the kind of commitment that you need to have for Rocket League. Hmm. How many hours would you say you have uh, combined between your two accounts? Or just like total hours in general? Um, I'd say around uh, like 2,000. Okay, that's a a good amount of hours for how high of a level you are so it's understandable no well that's reduced. active play <laughs> afk is probably 1k more yeah i know a lot because of because i'm uh, really bad about leaving the game <laughs> <laughs> all right well that's that's pretty much it i appreciate your time man thanks for problem my dude hanging out with me man it's fun. All right, guys. If you enjoyed this uh, the session, hit, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see some more content. And see you guys in the next one.